Hi. Wow. Hey. Wow. Wow. Look at that <laughs> fucking mustache. It is flush. I just combed <laughs> it. So yeah, thank you. It looks great. <laughs> uh, how are you? You're good. 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 How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm really excited to talk to you too. Thank you for doing this. Great um, to see you. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, about the podcast, Buffering, and sort of what how it came together, what was the kind of impetus for it? Um, did you have any idea that it would be incredibly successful when you had the idea? The way that it came about is that Kristen and I used to be married, as you know. Um, <laughs> you were in fact you were there. I was at the wedding. I can <laughs> testify that you were definitely married. <laughs> You can, yeah, you can validate this claim. Yes. And I had like gotten into some like TV rewatch or TV like concurrent watch podcasts like uh, X-Files Files and Cast of Kings and Storm of Spoilers. And I was just like having a blast uh, listening to people talk about shows that they loved and that I loved. And I was like, there is a show that I love that I feel like I could talk about for a uh, long time runs of time um and then I started harassing Kristen mm -hmm. uh trying to get her to cave in and commit <laughs> to making a podcast with me it took a long time uh, but she finally uh probably got tired of hearing me ask uh <laughs> and said okay fine let's do it I was like don't worry it won't be a lot of work you won't even notice the podcast is happening it's gonna be very chill, very relaxed. Yeah, and all of that has proven incredibly true. I barely even know we have a podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and obviously we underestimated the power of speaking of the chosen one because it was very high. <laughs> so Kristen, you were also a, a big Buffy fan as well. No, Jenny made me watch it. You know, I knew canonically of Buffy just because I'm her age and we grew up in the 90s and, and what have you, but I had never seen the show. Um, and Jenny tried to get me to watch it once and I couldn't make it through season one. And then I think like a year later, you were like, what about if we just start in season two? And, uh, then, and then I fell in love with it. So by the time we were doing the podcast, I was a, a fan. I was sort of curious, you know, you're, you're on season six now. I mean, do, do you feel like it took you, how long, how far into the process did you feel like you were like, okay, this is sort of like the formula that works for this podcast. This is how long it should be. These are segments. Like how did you kind of get a sense of what kind of work? I think that that's just changed every season, honestly. We didn't really pre-plan, if I'm remembering correctly, Jenny, I don't think we pre-planned any segments um, or format. The pandemic and, and our divorce changed so much. Like it's just sort of, evolved and, and we've been doing it now for four years um and so over that span of time it's just changed and I think we're also we're a little uh, more lenient with how long we talk now I think we were more conscious of keeping it shorter in the beginning and now it's like you know what we're gonna say what we've got to say <laughs> and if they're here they're here and if they don't want to be here they don't need to be here so you recently released this episode uh once more with once more with feeling and the episode just some the episode the buffy episode is called once more with feeling and you have 17 original songs in this episode i mean what it's two hours along i mean what was the process like for putting together this episode it seems like a very kind of ambitious <laughs> endeavor you're like what the hell were you thinking <laughs> <laughs> i think like um, this is, you know, such a huge episode in the Buffy universe and in the fandom that like, we don't, we've been thinking about it since we, you know, started the podcast. There's a spell that's cast on the town of Sunnydale and everyone's bursting into song and saying shit that they don't like mean to say, uh, you know, everybody's kind of secrets come out in this episode. It's huge, like plot turner, a big pivot point for, for the series. And we were like, why don't we take what we normally do and also burst into song, you know, spontaneously or, you know, seemingly spontaneously. Uh, why don't we take like the critiques and the conversations that we would normally have about this episode and mold them into something musical and we can bring in, you know, friends of the pod and make it kind of uh, a big party episode. Kristen? I think the idea was to do like four songs instead of one and maybe some like fun jingles along the way. And we, I think Jenny and I are both um, 
perfectionists and completionists. And we also are very excitable when we're doing something that we like. And so we should have probably realized uh, at the outset that those elements combined would wind up with us being like, ah, what about six songs? Ah, what about not? And then when we got to 14, we were like, well, the soundtrack of the original episode has 17. I don't think that we would have been able to begin it if we knew what we were going to be making, because I think we would have been like, that's impossible. <laughs> Um, but we were already deep in the mud by the time we realized, oh my God, <laughs> this, is a, yeah. this is a real undertaking. It's a, I mean, Jenny, from like a songwriting point of view, like obviously you've written many of your own songs and you've written, you know, for, for songwriting for big artists, like Hank of the Disco. I mean, what was it like approaching this project from a songwriting perspective? I think like Kristen said, like we get excited pretty easily, <laughs> you know, if we're like really into something uh it's like uh gasoline on a match you know and off to the races and, and at this point in my like songwriting career like the those are the sort of like the muscles of pulling something from nothing are like in constant use in my everyday life so I feel like I was Olympic trained for this moment in time and I think like what I do think is that like, I probably would have crashed and burned if uh, Kristen and I weren't collaborating on every single song. I think at this point, like we, our collaborative relationship is very strong and that, you know, that makes this stuff, this work like at times frustrating, at times bananas, but ultimately like I, I always know that we're going to get that we're gonna make the best possible thing we can make. Uh, universe willing, knock on wood, uh, we're trying our best. And uh, and yeah, like I, I think like we each have our strengths and we each have our uh, weaknesses. And I think that we like work pretty well together to smooth over each other's potholes. Got it. I mean, one thing that I found really interesting from reading about the podcast and reading reviews um, was how sort of empowering the show and the, and the podcast are to sort of fans and the sort of community. I mean, what do you think it is particularly about Buffy the Vampire Slayer that people seem to relate to so much today? I mean, even maybe people who weren't old enough to watch it when they were kids or weren't born yet or weren't old enough. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, like what the hell is it about Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of answers, but Jenny recently in a conversation was like, you know, we don't, what we don't give credit to. So I'm going to let you take that. Okay. All right, let's hear it, I Jenny. I don't actually know what that answer is. So I'm going to say <laughs> what naturally occurred to me. And then Kristen, you can fill it in if great, I miss it. Great, great, great. You know, we see it over and over and over again throughout the series, Jonah spoilers for seasons <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, and the first part of six. Buffy just keeps going. She never really, even at her lowest moments, like her core is still pushing forward. She is always fighting and always putting one foot in front of the other uh, for the greater good. And the other prong, I think, um, that like, fits in with that but also that like I think really hits people is that we see Buffy and her whole crew a huge um assemblage of every type of like other you could think of you know kind of like misfits brought together by love and by a, a common mission working together day in and day out to triumph over evil which I mean That's life. Uh, Kristen, did I get anywhere near my apparently really awesome answer that I came no, up with recently? You, you soared right past that one. This was much better. <laughs> I don't want to get too serious, but um, you know, Kristen, you were recently quoted in the New York Times um, sort of about these Josh Whedon, who's a creator of Buffy, kind of mistreating people on the set, um, this kind of stuff. I mean, Jenny, obviously this is a huge Thing in music to you know kind of separating the art from the artist I mean what is I guess this is a little timely because you know this is a recent story but but what is your take I guess on that and how do you 
kind of reconcile that with sort of the empowering aspects of the show? I, I think like it it is t like uh, rooted in this particular moment in time, but it also isn't, um, especially with, I mean, I, I was going to say especially with Joss Whedon, but really nearly anything that you like on a turnover from, you know, the 90s and early aughts and uh, unfortunately still now, you're going to find these uh, like problematic or worse human beings um, at, at the root of some of these creations that mean a lot to us. And I think with Joss, you know, with Joss, we've known as people close to the show and close to the universe that uh, he was not a great guy in a lot of ways. Um, and, and I think that like one of the biggest things that we have always talked about in our podcast space and in the community is that he also wasn't the only person who is responsible for this thing. And, um, you know, I think figuring out what you allow like a uh, shitty white dude to take away from you as a community and what you don't is just an ongoing conversation. And um, I think the way that people from the show itself speak about Buffy specifically is like, hell yes, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and hell no to this dude who happened to be, you know, the creator of that character. Um, and so we've also taken cues from, from them. That's a really great answer. Jenny, do you have anything to add to that? There's something that I think about a lot um, with regard to writing songs that maybe applies here. Like I think once I write a song and like put it into the universe, upload it to Spotify, whatever, all the control that I have over that song has been relinquished. Anybody could listen to that song and have their own experience of it, you know, project parts of their life onto it in a way that like is enriching or um, meaningful to them. I feel like similarly, you know, further to what Kristen just said, like Buffy belongs to the world. And I don't think that the unacceptable behavior or bad actions of somebody in a position of power in the structure of that show uh, gets to take away the power and the way that it has touched lives, I think. Yeah. yeah. So what, what Kristen said, but sloppier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you answering that. I think that's really important, uh, important point to make. Um, I'm, I'm sort of almost done, but I was curious, um, you know, you're, you're into season six, there's what, seven seasons of the show? Um, so obviously there's a finite number of episodes. What happens sort of after you run out of, of episodes? Do you have another show you would do? Is there another element of the show? Are you figuring that out? Is there anything, you know, have you thought that far ahead? Um, so one thing that we've talked about maybe doing is once we get through season seven, starting at the beginning with spoilers, uh, having kind of like a fuller conversation around each episode. And also I think there are topics that we would handle differently if we were making some of those episodes for the first time today. I think there are different kinds of voices we would like to bring into those conversations. And I, I think that I think that there's still a lot more to say about the episodes we've already talked about. And I think there are interesting ways that we could do that. But also I might just run away <laughs> into the main wilderness, never to be heard from again. Nary a podcast, Mike. Uh, <laughs> will ever touch these lips again. It's just a split screen and one is like Jenny 2012, like, please, can't we do a podcast? And then the other is 2022, just like my, my diminishing podcast. silhouette on the horizon <laughs> yeah. headed for the tree line. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it, like it, it just, every time we say it, it gets more and more real, right? Like every time we like utter that out loud, I'm like, oh my God, this is the time when like this idea is going to like solidify and become a, a real boy. Um, but I don't think we will be 95 years old on our like 80th run through the, the series, but you know, doing it once more with spoilers is I think a full possibility. I feel like as many times as I've watched Buffy, it's always had something new 
to offer me. And I, I think that's the same for a lot of people. I think it's really special. I think that's a big part of its staying power. It's like not just something you watch and forget. You It goes with you and you recommend it to people and you get you know, your partner to watch it and then you trick them into making a podcast and then you get divorced <laughs> and you're still making the podcast. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, God, really, truly. But I can't imagine that we're just going to, that's going to be it. We're going to pack up our bags and like Jenny and I are never going to podcast about anything ever again. You know, I, I think that we both really enjoy collaborating and um, we have this whole community that we love. And so we want to stay immersed in that and in the work I think for as long as we can. Definitely. Um, last thing I really wanted to touch on, Jenny, I know you just announced a new EP, a new band, uh, and also uh, this Buffy episode, Once More with Once More with Feeling coming out on vinyl. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe just talk about any of these sort of musical um, kind of things you have coming up and maybe Kristen, if you have anything else kind of, I'm sure you have other stuff that you're working on as well. Maybe we could just touch on that really quick. Sure, 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 sure. Um, hell yeah, I have a new band. We're called LAXs and uh, we are four ladies. We are gay. Uh, we have sort of kind of like a, a Beatlesian sort of uh, harmonic and melodic approach uh, with a sort of like Rolling Stones, Shangri-Las kind of like energy or attitude, but make it gay. And, you know, just like a little fucking jangly uh, pop and roll surfy business. I don't just write songs about Buffy. I write songs about my delicate little feelings and some of them will be coming soon. I've seen you perform solo so many times. It must be exciting to get up there and have that kind of a dynamic. It is really exciting. Everybody in the band rips and it's super, super fun. I have always been a solo artist. So it is weird to adjust to band democracy, uh, <laughs> but no bloodshed yet. Yeah. Well, it sounds like working on this podcast is probably a good way to kind of prepare, you know, you're <laughs> collaborating, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, conflict management. Oh, um, yeah. You could get right? married to each person in that band and divorce them and still keep the band. And going. then the and band you, name you, would you actually be more, yeah. yes. <laughs> Great. Sounds like a lot of work, but okay. <laughs> yeah, timing will be tricky too. I mean, that's a lot to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I I mean, truthfully, truthfully, like this podcast takes up the majority of my time uh, at this point, but um, I, before I had buffering, I was doing work with um, LGBTQ uh, young people and their parents and um, speaking at universities and things. And so I've sort of built out on that and I've been doing um, a lot of work with workplaces um, and then I am also working on a, um, another book which is part of um, an ongoing series there are these little like graphic guides um, and so I'm going to begin work on um, a guide for coming out with this incredible artist but you probably won't see that you know how books are it's like I'm only just beginning to work so you'll probably see it like 2024 <laughs> um, but generally doing as much as I can with queer community while also keeping the buffering ship uh, afloat great cool well I think that should be good for me is there is there anything else you want to make sure I didn't hit on or is it hooray no that hooray was um, um, Jonah should... rocks. Have we thought about telling the people that Jonah rocks? Yeah, Jonah is amazing. Definitely sign up for Jonah. Uh, ten out of ten. <laughs> subscribe. Smash that subscribe button on Jonah. <laughs> <laughs>